Well, thank you very much, Carol, for anchoring our program this morning. Good morning, church. I say good morning, church. Praise the name of the Lord. I've been away for about uh, two Sundays, and it's good to be back home. There's no place like home. I enjoy these guys. I enjoy the worship team. Let's acknowledge them once more. Jean Benet, uh, thank you very much for leading us and ushering us into praise and worship, the very presence of God. Right. Uh, last Sunday, Pastor Clo introduced the theme for these two months, the month of October and November. Normally, we develop a sub-theme in only one month, but this two months, month of October and November, we are going to be developing uh, this theme, this sermon series, Divine Repositioning. What is divine repositioning? It means to be at the place where God wants you to be. Where God desires to you to be. Now, sometimes we find ourselves in places where we are not. Where God desires us to be because of lack of discernment and understanding we find ourselves not where God expects us to be we, ex we find ourselves not in a season where God wants us to be and I believe for each and every one of us there is a season God wants you to be and some of us might be missing for instance we are in spring could be that some people spiritually they are still in winter wake up Spring has sprung. The essence of our preaching at the center and the thrust of our preaching these two months is God is the God of repositioning. God wishes I and you to be where he wants us to be. God wants us to be aligned to his purposes. Some of us, there is a gap between where we are and where we should be. Some of us are having an agenda, pursuing an agenda that may not be God's agenda. But we are saying this two months, preaching from God's word, he is the God who wants to reposition us. God, who wants to reposition us. Your position, your posture is going to change. And God wants you to be where you ought to be. Obviously, it's not physical. But probably it has to do with the mindset how you think, maybe at the present moment, your mindset, the way you think about things and about issues, it's not aligned to what God expects from you. Spirituality, habits, behavioral patterns, maybe you know very well from the depth of your heart, 
I am not where God wants me to be. I can lie to all other people. I can't lie to myself. I know where I ought to be. I know very well from the depth of your heart. I am not where God wants me to be. I can lie to all other people. I can't lie to myself. I know where I ought to be. Maybe some of us, it's not only mindset, spirituality, but you talk about declarations. You talk about confessions. You talk about decrees. Some of us at this present moment, God wants you to declare things differently. God wants you to articulate things differently. And I believe throughout these two months, God will reveal himself as the God of repossession. Now, because of the constraints of time, last Sunday, Pastor Claude could not unpack the text on which this theme is based. It is based on 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. It says, He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the edge heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. The context of First and Second Samuel is the time of Judges. We read Judges 2 verse 10, that people did as they pleased, according to their own minds. And when First Samuel opens, we find the story of Hannah. She was barren. She was childless. And she prayed to God. She poured her heart to God. And I believe she was praying. That, oh God, that's not where I ought to be. My season, it's not the season of barrenness. She, as we remember, was scolded by the second wife of her husband, Elkanah. But she did not concentrate on that. She poured her heart to God. Why? Because she knew I deserve a son. And she prayed to God. She needed a breakthrough. She needed a miracle. She needed God's intervention in her life. God is the God of repositioning. He will reposition you from your season of barrenness into the season of abundance. And God granted her the desire of her heart. And now in chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 2, she starts to pray. My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted to the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. No one is holy like the Lord. For there is none besides you. Nor is there any rock like our God. Now, God has changed her fortunes. God has granted the desire of her heart. And now she rejoices. And I believe some of us, if not all of us, we are going to rejoice. 
because God is the God of repositioning. You could be finding yourself where you ought not to be. We are here to tell you the good news is God is the God of repositioning. And Hannah says, I rejoice in the Lord for what he has done. Now, verse 8, she continues in verse 8. She says, God has raised the poor from the dust. In her thanksgiving to the Lord, somebody shout the name of the Lord. God rejoices or God specializes in raising the poor from the dust. Now the Jewish people have ways of categorizing things and experiences. When they talk about dust, it is the lowest form of experience in life. But Hannah says, because of what the Lord has done, he has raised me from the dust. And she also says, he raises the needy from the dunghill. The Bible defines the dunghill as the most wretched place you could find yourself in. She was childless. She was barren. And she calls that state, that season, a wretched place. God specializes in restoration. God specializes in elevating people. And Anna Sana says, he will seat them with princes and they will inherit the throne of glory, the place of honor. This text was written many centuries ago, but I'm here to tell you the Old Testament is alive. The New Testament is alive. I appropriate the scripture by faith. The God of honor is the God of my life. He is going to elevate me. He's going to elevate us from the dust, from the dunghill. Now she also says, for the pillars of the earth are Javes. He has set the world on them. Now this captures how the Jewish people thought about creation, about the earth. They thought the earth is flat. God has put the earth on four pillars. But also they believed there were three levels of life or existence. They believed that the place under the earth was called Sheol. Or hell, the place of the departed, and the earth that's where we live. And they believed that the region above the earth, the heavens, it is another sphere of life and existence. So Hannah is saying, For the pillars of the earth are Javes. He has set the world on them. What is it, is it saying? He, she is saying actually the Lord is in control. The Lord is in charge. He is the, he is the one who determines. One who determines what should, what should take place. Divine repositioning. Now last Sunday Pastor Klo read from John chapter 15 from verse 1 to 5. Today, I am giving the sub-theme of a message today, a season of change. A season of change. Reading from Jeremiah 12, verse 1 to 5. Just a little context before we come to the heart of the message. Jeremiah speaks. He speaks on behalf of the minority of the Jewish tribe. They are dissatisfied about where they are. They are not happy about what God is doing. And they are 
open to God. Verse 1. Righteous are you, O Lord, when I plead with you, yet let me talk with you about judgments. Why does the way of the wicked prosper? Why are those happy who deal treacherously? This trap, these people are concerned. They know God is righteous. They know he has righteous judgments. But they are surprised that they see people who are unrighteous. The wicked. They prosper. And hence, Jeremiah speaks on behalf of this remnant that this is unfair that the righteous God can prosper people who are wicked, who are evil, who are unrighteous. And this is some, even if we don't say it, some of us, we wish to compare ourselves with other people. And we look at our levels of commitment and the things of God. And we are surprised, but why? This person is not as committed as I am. But look at their lives. They prosper. That was the first problem of this remnant and Jeremiah. The second problem, verse 2. You have planted them, yes, they have taken root. They grow. Yes, they bear fruit. You are near in their mouth, but far from their minds. In other words, these people are wicked. They, they, they are far from you in terms of their minds. But Lord, you have planted them. They have taken root. They are growing. They are bearing fruit. This is a problem. To this remnant, to these people. God, how come that you are unjust? Verse 3. But you, O oh Lord, know me. You have seen me. And you have tested my heart toward you. In other words, this is selfishness of the highest order. You know me, Lord. You know how I pray. You know my commitment. You know my financial. You know all those things. But how come that what they experience, I do not experience? Verse 4. How long will the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither? The beasts and the birds are consumed for the wickedness of those who dwell there. Because they said he will not see a final end. They theologize, eh, Pastor Magaya. They try and do some theology here. They say, God, this wickedness that is emitted by these people has affected things even around. They say, the herbs of every field, they with the beasts and the birds are consumed. The sins of these people has affected us. The sins of these people have affected our city. So honey, it's not what it's supposed to be. South Africa is not what it's supposed to be because of the wickedness of people. That's what they think. That's their problem. Before God. They have answered, they have questions that they are sincerely posing to God. Verse 5. In the Bible that I read, it says, God responded. <laughs> God answered. Now, that statement to me is very much significant. It means there is no situation, deep-seated as it might be, that God will not answer. That God will not respond to. Now this remnant of the Jewish tribe. They are sincere before God. They are asking questions before God. They are also implicitly accusing God. 
Now you have your time. You can say whatever thing you wish to say. But God has his own time. God responds to each and every question. God responds to each and every situation without exception. If you are here today, your life, it's not where it's supposed to be. You're answering deep-seated questions. I want to tell you today that God answers. God responds to each and every situation. And for that reason, I believe God is not silent. God speaks into your heart. God speaks into your situation. God answers Jeremiah and his people and God answers by way of a rhetorical question. He says in verse 5, If you have run with footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? These questions that you are asking, it's very clear that you are running with the footmen. Now the footmen in that culture, ancient culture, when a nation was fighting against another nation, the first battalion that they sent and dispatched to the enemy were foot soldiers. In most cases, there were many, thousands of them. They were not as well equipped as the horsemen or the cream of the army. They were dispatched to weaken the enemy. They were dispatched to test the strength of the enemy. In other words, this is not the real army. The real army is coming. Foot men. And they have wearied you. They have made you tired. How then are you going to contend with the horses? They are foot men situations they are foot men problems it's not the real thing but you are contending you are fighting a situation and you complain like Jeremiah and this remnant and God says, you don't have the real thing. You are not fighting the real battle. These are only food soldiers. You are facing a food man problem. And you are worn out. You complained. You are tired. And God says, uh, how are you going to run with the horses? I have something to say to someone today that ye are the food man problems. These are not meant to defeat you. This is not the real battle that ye are fighting and you are worn. You are weary. You are tired and you complain. I have good news for you. God is preparing you to run with horses. God is preparing you for the real battle that is going to bring your breakthrough, your miracle. Praise the name of the Lord. Obviously, we are not talking about a, is that watch correct? Huh, you guys, I know that you, just, you know, switch the, the watch sometimes. Right, okay. I hope that's correct. 
Thank God. Thank God. He's a merciful God. He's a grateful God. Who tells us the truth? Your battle is not with footmen. Your battle is with horsemen. That's where your battle is. You cannot control, you cannot complain, you cannot cry, you cannot be wearied by foot soldiers. Jeremiah, before I formed you, before you were conceived, I knew you. I have sanctified you. I have ordained you. I have separated you. Before you were born, before you were, you were conceived, this is not your battle. You are not meant to Fight uh, food men, uh, food soldiers. Uh, you are meant uh, to run uh, with the horses. It is not physical. Because if you run physically with the horses, you are not going to compete them. But God is talking about capacity. God is talking about ability that God spiritually is giving you the capacity, the ability to run with the horses. Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Uh, plans uh, to prosper you and not to harm you. Uh, plans uh, to give you hope uh, and the future. Stop uh, complaining. Uh, stop uh, preparing your. Start preparing uh, yourselves. Uh, stop comparing uh, yourselves. Uh, your blessing is on the way, and it is uh, when you are going to run um, with the horses. Uh, some of us, uh, you were not meant to be an employee, but God uh, has meant you to be an employee to run with the horses. Somebody shout the name of the Lord. I'm here to tell you that maybe you're struggling with a diploma with the first degree. That's not God Almighty has prepared you to fight to walk, to run with the horses. I'm preparing myself, cornerstone. Let us prepare ourselves. We were not meant to run with the footmen, but to run with the horses, to run with the horsemen. In conclusion, you might be walking with footmen now. It's right, it's okay, but it is preparing you for something better. Is preparing you for the future. Zig Ziglar says, every successful person has a painful story. Every painful story has a successful ending. Accept the pain today and get ready for your breakthrough. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, you are running with the food, man. And it is tiring. But God is preparing you to run with the horses. John Rice says, do not put a question mark where God has put a full stop. It has happened. It, it has happened. It is done. It is finished. Don't ask questions where God has put a full stop. Your life will be far better than you are experiencing it today. An anonymous author says, no one manufactures a lock without a key. Similarly, God won't allow problems without the key to your solutions. The one who manufactures the lock manufactures the key. Without exception, each and every lock that is represented here, there is a key. There is a solution. There is a word from the Lord. Let's trust Jesus today with our lives. Let us trust him with our all. Eugene Peterson says, I will not try to run my own life or the lives of others. That is God's business. Don't try and run your own life. Don't try and run and compare yourselves with other people. That is God's business. My business is I am called to run with the horsemen, to run with their horses. Let's give the Lord an, an applause. Let us give the Lord 
a shout of praise as we are going to pray together. Let us believe that somebody's destiny is going to change. Let us believe that God is going to lift someone in our midst. Let's stand on our feet. You are the pillar that holds my life. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. You are the pillar that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the pillar that holds my life. Father, you are the pillar that holds my life. conscious of you here it should also touch you over there as we have our I know very deep in my heart my life needs Jesus my life needs God's intervention and you cannot save yourself but it is God through Jesus who will reposition your life and give you a new beginning talking about church I'm not talking about religion I'm talking about encounter I'm talking about an experience with God to open your life, open yourself to God in your life He knows better than all of us If you're here today physically and you say, Pastor, I need prayer today I cannot go back home without somebody praying for me believe this prayer is life changing it's transformational it will change your life for the better if you're here today all eyes closed, nobody moving around just slip up your hand and say here today do you need God in your life are you here today and you say oh God I can't make it at home in the balcony is there any person who says your word is true. Your word is alive. Your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. You are prepared to reposition them. You are prepared, Father Lord God, to 
give them another chance. You are prepared to give them the second chance. Jesus, we have prayed. I say in the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Right, the ushers are saying, if you came late before or after we took the tithes and offerings, you can do that as we go away. And those who visited us for the first time, um, you have been welcomed. And an usher is there having a visitor's welcome home. Right, please just go through that door. Um, one of our staff will be with you talk you talk with you for less than five minutes praise God hallelujah let us do the grace together may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever Amen. You are blessed throughout the week.